it's just that one, it's just trend that just just makes life living hell. You know, it just makes everything, everything gets to me on track, so. Of all the steroids Larry has ever done over the last 10 years, trend by far the worst. Name a steroid worse than trend. There is none, that is the worst one. Coach Greg, and in today's video, Larry Wheels opens up about steroids. What he's taken, the drugs, the doses, everything. And he does so during an interview with Pete Rubish. You want to see his entire video, please go subscribe to Pete Rubish, former powerlifting phenom. No doubt the PRs don't come as easy anymore. That's no doubt. You know, they're a lot harder. Like every 0.5% is a struggle to put on. And so Larry Wheels has been abusing PDs for over 10 years. And so despite the fact that he's not natural, it's not easy to make any gains. To set PRs, he would have to use so many PDs, he's not willing to do it. And so the thought of entering a powerlifting competition, it's of no interest to him anymore because the amount of PDs he'd have to take is simply not worth it. However, in Strongman, which some believe you have to abuse PDs even more, he simply doesn't believe that to be the case. And why? Well, because he hasn't perfected his technique. There's a steep learning curve and he believes that without taking higher doses of PDs, he can become stronger and better at those activities. And this makes a lot of sense as he can in fact progress without taking more PDs and focus on the skill rather than just simply getting bigger and or stronger. For me to hit PR to those specific movements, like it's gonna take so much that I'm not willing to sacrifice my health anymore for that. And notice he says, I'm not willing to sacrifice my health anymore for that. It's not saying he hasn't sacrificed his health. He's saying anymore. If you were to continue to push the drug envelope the way he has in the past, simply not worth it at this stage in his career. I don't have any aches and pains, but that's because I'm so into sauce all year round. So that's as an anti-inflammatory. And Larry Wheels says he never comes off. That's right. He's always on a testosterone cycle. That means he's not just using HRT. He's doing blasts and cruises. Why? Because in the past, the aches and pains would creep up every time he went off. He feels great on cycle, not feeling a bunch of pains. But when you take those drugs away, that is when the pains set in. The achy elbows, shoulders, hips, knees, and so on feels a lot worse when coming off than when you're on cycle. Problem is, when you're on cycle, you don't feel those aches and pains, and you continue to push yourself harder, causing even more injuries. And so eventually, when you get older, and you eventually have to come off, imagine the toll that's gonna play on your body. Case in point, Ronnie Coleman. The man trained harder than last time for many years. Ain't nothing but a peanut. Lightweight, baby. Yet look at the suffering he's doing now as a result of abusing PDs and training so hard in the gym. Body just feels like trash, but I've been off testosterone for almost 18 months, so. And Pete Rubish himself says he's been off for 18 months. Feels like trash, just doesn't feel as good as he used to. In comparison, if he had stayed natural his entire career, pretty sure he'd feel good at this point. Because strongman is so endurance based, so cardiovascularly based. Is trend like not as big in strongman because you have to be able to like do these endurance events? And we all know trend kind of works counter counteractively against endurance. And in powerlifting, we all know that trend is king. It's going to provide amazing gains. But powerlifting, it's all about how much can you lift. Lifts probably take five seconds or less. In comparison, in strongman with a greater requirement for endurance, does trend actually hinder your progress? Well, you know, it depends on the event. So let's say there's five different movements that you have to train for. And so Larry says it depends on the events they're having in the strongman competition. Some are more heavily favored towards cardio and others more on strength. And so depending on the competition, you have to decide whether or not you're going to use trend for that particular meet. Besides gas and the event, like all the other sides that trend brings, like the mood swings and the insomnia and the acne, like just a nightmare to deal with it. Like, is it even worth the small extra strength gain they'll give you over something like a D-ball or T-ball or, you know, or decorate equipment? Like, is it even worth it? But it's, it is a nightmare to deal with this. So I hate it. And I hate it. And so Larry Wheels, he hates it. Same feeling for me. I absolutely hated to use trend. However, the gains are so good that you decide, I'm gonna use it anyway. The problem is, if you up the dose too much, it simply makes life unbearable. I had at one point used 700 milligrams a week for approximately two weeks, couldn't handle it. 
was just making life too unbearable. Couldn't sleep, feeling anxiety, feeling uneasy, not liking what you're thinking about. It just makes it unbearable. You might think you need it to make gains, but trust me, unless you're a high level straw man, power lifter or bodybuilder, you can make the gains that you need without ever using trend. I feel like I'm psychotic. Like I turn into crazy person, aggressive, um, paranoid, like super, it's, it's so bad for me. So it got me like nothing got me as strong as that did, but I just couldn't handle it much longer. And, and so Pete himself said nothing got him as strong as Trent, but it simply wasn't worth it. Think of it. He's describing paranoia. His wife said, never take that ever again. Made him have crazy thoughts, was having anxiety. It's not worth it. All for what? To put on a few kilos on your bench press, squat, deadlift, to walk around with a few extra pounds of muscle. Is it really worth it? I need to dial things back and I want to have kids, you know, soon. You know, I don't want to be 35, 40 trying to have kids. Um, I don't even know if I'm fertile enough to have kids. I have to deal with that as well. I have to figure that out. And if you do abuse PDs, including Trend, it's going to shut you down very hard. And some people, they cannot have children. They may have to go off cycle, take HCG, Clomid. For example, Kali Muscle wanted to have kids, couldn't have them, had to go off PDs for two years used in vitro fertilization in order to have kids. And so if you are questioning whether or not you want to use steroids in particular trend, please think about all the negative side effects, possibly not being able to have children, not being able to sleep, having anxiety, feeling like garbage, feeling like shit, not to mention the damage it does to the inside of your body, cardiovascular diseases, and so on. It's just that one, it's just trend that just just makes life living hell. You know, it just makes everything, everything gets to me on track. So of all the steroids Larry has ever done over the last 10 years, trend by far the worst name a steroid worse than trend. There is none. That is the worst one. And Larry wheels because of this, he hasn't used trend in a long time. He also hasn't been using orals. He's sticking to just testosterone. And as you may know, orals are notorious for doing damage to the liver. And depending on the orals you're taking and the doses, it can absolutely crush your appetite. When I used Anadrol at 100 milligrams a day, I could hardly keep the food down, was practically never hungry, was not a wanted side effect. I was trying to get as massive as humanly possible. But imagine having to wake up in the middle of the night to throw up every time you lay down, feeling like you're going to vomit, feeling nauseous. It is not worth it lowered the dose to 50 could still hardly handle it even at that amount. In comparison, other drugs such as Anivar, my absolute favorite oral of all time. This one made me feel strong, gave me great pumps. And so depending on the steroid you choose to you, you can expect to get different side effects, both good and bad. Halo testin never made me like that. Halo testin maybe made me a touch more irritable, but I never got the like crazy game mind games like trend. And my experience with Halo, what that did for me, it was almost like a very strong pre-workout. It really got me going, wanted me to go and attack the weights, got me aggressive, but in a good way. Loved it. However, it's extremely harsh on the liver. It's very hepatoxic, and so it can only be used for very short periods of time, perhaps one month or less. In comparison, Anivar, a lot less harsh on the liver. This one, you can do for longer periods of time. Not saying it's safe, not saying you should do anything. And by the way, I am not a doctor. Only use PDs with the advice and consent from your doctor. And so Larry says he likes Anivar when he's doing competitions or perhaps just trying to look good for a photo shoot, something to fill a void at a dose of 50 to 100 milligrams a day. Let me tell you, I've used Anadvar at 100 milligrams a day for a few days. It is absolutely redonkulous. To think that he was using 50 to 100 consistently, that is a lot of Anivar. However, in comparison to other steroids like Halo, it is a lot less harsh on the liver. And so when he did his blood work, although it was never great on Anivar, it was certainly a lot better than when using Trent. Anivar, I got just as good a strength as like Anadrol. Like I, I got better actually. Anivar, I saw better strength gains than Anadrol. I loved it. It was like my favorite. I wish I discovered it sooner. And so Pete Rubish says he got just as much strength gains from using Anivar as Anadrol. And and for me, the same thing. I never got greater strength gains from Anadrol than Anivar. Anadrol made me a lot more puffy, bloated, never looked as good, but Anivar, the strength I got from that, absolutely out of this world. 
Larry's listening to this. He's like, okay. He clearly doesn't agree with him, but he doesn't want to have an argument. And so the thing you need to know is that all orals work differently for everyone. And not just orals, injectables as well. Two people could use the exact same dose of, for example, Anivar versus Anadrol, and one gets better results on one and the other the exact opposite. And so just because you read or your friends tell you that this is going to do this to you, it doesn't necessarily mean it's going to be the case. We all know people are hyper responders to PDs and even natural supplements such as terchesterone. Some people are gonna make more gains than others. The same applies to Anivar, Anirol, Trend, Test, and so on. I never tried Anivar in preparation for a big PR. It's always been like my bodybuilding days where I would try and cut down for a show. I'd have Anivar in the mix. And so Larry Wheels has never used Anivar to try and set PRs. I am the exact opposite. When I would do a powerlifting competition, I specifically would increase my dose of Anivar. Add to that Halo to get that extra aggression, that drive in the gym, extra strength and power. And that was my go-to stack. It was never D-Ball or Anadrol, simply never liked them as much. And so I do think Larry Wheels is missing out, but you never know. Perhaps me and Pete were better responders to Anivar and Larry Wheels a better responder to Anadrol. I would basically do, because it takes about two to three weeks to kick in. So the first two to three weeks, you're not going to feel much. And I 100% disagree with this. Pete Rubich is saying it takes two to three weeks to feel the effects of Anivar. For me, two to three hours. If I were to take 50 milligrams of Anivar right now and go to the gym in three hours, I would without question feel like super freaking man on that day. But it doesn't mean Pete is lying. It takes two to three weeks for him to feel it. I feel terchesterone the first day. Day one, taking terchesterone, I feel better in the gym. Somebody else takes two to three weeks or perhaps they don't feel it work at all. Doesn't mean it doesn't work. Doesn't mean they're lying, doesn't mean I'm lying. I'm a hyper responder, I feel things right away. And so for me, Anivar, absolutely incredible. I mean, I'm not trying to encourage you to go take it, I'm just telling you the truth. That was the one that I wish I could take. If there was one steroid right now that I wish I could add on to my HRT dose, which is prescribed by my doctor, 140 milligrams a week, it would be Anivar. I would do 25 megs and then Three weeks in, I'll kick it up to 50 megs, 25 morning, 25 evening to cover the half-life. And so perhaps that's why he was taking 25 milligrams a day for the first three weeks. And then after three weeks, he would go up to 25 milligrams twice a day. Obviously, if you double the dose, you're going to feel a lot more. And the thing with Anivar, if you're taking it at a very low dose, you may or may not notice it even working. It's working. It's helping you. You just don't feel it. You don't notice it. And I've done that where I've coached people in the past. They've been taking Anivar and they're like, no, nah, I don't feel it doing anything. It's not working. Yet week after week, they're setting PRs. And I'm like, you really don't feel it working? Your bench press is going up every single week. Been doing that for a month straight. No, that's just me. I'm just making the gains. Just a great programming, great coaching, Coach Greg. And I'm like, I gotta tell you, I really think the Anivar is working. I wouldn't expect you to gain this kind of weight doing it natural. No, it's all me. Anivar probably fake. Okay, then once the cycle comes to an end, they stop taking the Anivar. Well, lo and behold, every week their strength goes down. Do you really think it wasn't working out? And so they said, well, I kind of feel weaker now that I go to the gym. And so just because you don't feel something working doesn't mean it's not actually working. And perhaps you're using natural supplements like creatine or terchesterone and you're saying, I don't feel it working. Well, just because you don't feel it working doesn't mean it's not actually doing something. They're not stimulants. It's not like drinking a cup of coffee, a Red Bull, taking a pre-workout. These things are helping the body get a better pump, better recovery, enhanced endurance, and so on. Doesn't mean you're necessarily going to feel like you're Superman. They're not going to give you the gains of Trend, Test, or even Anivar. But doesn't mean they're not working. And I would run it like 12 weeks because it's not very liver toxic at all. As you said, your liver enzymes don't change much. Your, your HDL, which is your good cholesterol, it'll get cut down in about 50%. But other than that, like the actual damage on lab work isn't that bad. And Pete is saying Anivar doesn't really affect your blood work all that bad. And for the most part, he's kind of right, but kind of wrong. Just as some people are hyper responders to PDs, some people are poor responders health-wise to PDs. I've seen several people take the same dose of SARMs and or steroids. Blood work comes back. One person, horrible side effects from that drug. 
Others, no problem. And so unfortunately, just because one person takes steroids and it doesn't negatively affect their blood work, doesn't mean someone else will experience the same thing. And consider Pete's dose 25 to 50 milligrams. That is significantly different than Larry who was doing 50 to 100 milligrams. If you're doing 100 milligrams of Anivar for weeks on end, trust me, you are going to experience negative blood work. So, Interesting. And it didn't affect your appetite negatively? Or nothing, like no toxicity as far as that's concerned because it's not hard on the liver, so you don't get all the toxicity. And notice Larry Wheel asking, did it negatively impact your appetite? I keep telling people that bodybuilders abusing PD, saying it's so hard to eat all this food, saying it's not because you're eating so many calories, it's because you're abusing PDs. Using a lot of orals, it's gonna crush your appetite. It's just the way it is. You know, obviously I don't take anything anymore, but like, I loved it. That was my favorite. Clearly, Anivar is a favorite of mine and Pete Rubish. However, we did experience its effects differently. I felt Anivar right away. Pete took two to three weeks. In comparison, Larry Wheels never really liked Anivar that much. Never noticed the dramatic effects. If he did, trust me, he would have been using it when he was trying to set world records in powerlifting and strongman. Ending it here. GregDuset.com for coaching. Greg Duset IP Pro. Also, harder than last time supplements, the natural ones like creatine, turkesterone, pre-workouts, and so on. So many, I can't list them all here. Click the link in the description. Also, giving away free training programs now. We're working on free nutrition programs. All kinds of free stuff, recipes, and so on. Please become one of the nearly 200,000 newsletters subscribers by clicking the link in the description. Subscribe, click the bell button, comment for the algorithm, and until next time, I am out.